Hello everyone, I am Chase here at Rocky Mountain ATVMC and this is our ride review for the Alta Redshift MX. So the Alta Redshift, you know, probably one of the most talked about bikes since it came out back in 2016. We've seen these at the Red Bull Straight Rhythm, we've seen guys hucking these in dunes, we've seen guys do even doing some urban riding. And there's three different versions. You've got the MX, which is what we have here. They also have a Supermoto, as well as an EX, which is gonna be their enduro bike. So when Alta made these, their, their goal was to have a fully electric bike that was comparable to a 250F. And honestly, after riding it, putting some time on this thing, I really do think that they, they hit the mark and maybe even exceeded it in some ways. And really the only limiting factor with these bikes is gonna be the battery life. And we'll definitely touch on that more. But you know, we put some time on this and we wanted to give you guys a quick ride review, talk about how the bike feels, how the performance is. And also we had some questions that we wanted answered when we got one of these that we felt would be good information to give to you guys as the viewers. So if you are considering buying one of these, you know, it's gonna answer some questions that you guys might have as well. Okay, so let's dive into it. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this bike. So before I get started though, I, I will just say that my overall first impression of the Alta Redshift, I'm really impressed. I think Alta, I think they put a really good package together. And the first benefit, the pro that I wanna talk about is probably one of my favorites and it's the noise. It is incredible how quiet this bike is. It's so silent even, it, that's probably the weirdest thing to get used to is it's, you can hear the chain slapping on the chain guide, you can hear the tire bouncing on the ground, which is actually kind of cool. I, I thought it was pretty neat after a little bit. And it's so quiet that the tire, sometimes I'd look back and I almost thought I had a flat tire because it's a dead noise. But the nice thing about this bike being so silent is if you're a rider looking for a bike and you want to be able to go ride maybe just in the field close to your house or there's some homes nearby, or if you want to just go trail riding somewhere where noise is going to be a factor and you don't want to worry about people complaining about that noise, well, this thing is so quiet, you don't really have to worry about that. So the cool thing is, is it opens up riding possibilities and riding areas that might not be possible right now. So that's a really strong point for somebody who might be interested in buying one of these. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of riders out there who don't like the idea of not having a clutch or a shifter, however, for me, riding it, that's actually one of the biggest benefits I can see with this bike. It actually just makes it really fun and really easy to ride no matter what you're doing, especially for trail riding. It's nice because sometimes shifting can be a chore when you are trail riding, depending on the trails you're on. So not having to worry about shifting or clutching is actually really nice. You can just twist the throttle and go. And I will say that this bike doesn't limit me. I can push hard. I can ride any type of terrain. I can push. I can go fast. I don't feel like there's anything about this bike that's holding me back from really riding to my full potential. And with that, that takes us to the next thing I wanna talk about, which is gonna be the different maps. So on this bike, you're gonna have four different maps. You're gonna have maps one, two, three, and four. Map one is gonna be mostly your, your trail map, so it's a really mellow setting, okay? Not all the power. Map two is gonna be, they say, more of your off-road, you know, getting into MX. Map three is gonna be your performance. And then map four is gonna be what they call overclocked. And I'll be honest, map four, I never even really used it. It's so much power, it's so torquey, the, the rear wheel broke loose a lot. So we didn't use map four a lot. We actually used map three for most of the riding that we were doing. And you gotta remember that depending on the map you're using is the amount of battery life that you're gonna get. So on maps one and two, you're gonna get about three to four hours of battery life. And map three, which is what we had it in, about 45 minutes is what we got, and that's what they say on their website. And in map four, you're only gonna get 20 minutes. So unless you wanna do a sprint moto for 20 minutes and you're okay with that, just know not very long battery life in map four. Now one thing I really liked about it was the power curve in the map. So like I said, we rode it mostly in map three, which is a pretty aggressive setting. So what's nice is they made it smooth and linear. So you can crack the throttle wide open and it's not just gonna put all the power to the ground immediately. It's still gonna have a smooth linear pull. So it's gonna feel like you're riding a four stroke. And I think they did a good job with that. So I like the mapping. I like the, the, uh, the fact that you do have four different maps. So no matter what type of riding you're gonna be doing, they do have a map that's gonna be really good for you. So a couple other cool things about it is you got good components on these. So you've got Warp 9 wheels along with the hubs. You've got Brembo brakes, which are actually really good brakes. So front brake is awesome. Rear brake, it's so sensitive, it's almost too good for me. So I had a hard time with that, but really good brakes on this. Now, a lot of riders talk about the weight because it does weigh 267 pounds, so it weighs more than a 450. But I will say that because it doesn't have that gyroscopic effect and that rotating mass in the engine, you don't feel the weight when you're turning this. In fact, that was one of the things that impressed me was 
I think it handles really well. I didn't feel much different than riding just a regular four stroke or even a two stroke. So when it comes to handling, I don't think that's anything you should be concerned with. Another pro with this is gonna be maintenance. You know, it's very limited maintenance that you have to do with these bikes. Obviously you have your wheels, your bearings, your pivot points, you're gonna need to service those. But when it comes to the motor, because it is electric, really you only have two things you need to do. You have coolant in the motor, which you actually only need to replace about once every 100 hours, or which is about a year, so whichever comes first. There is a coolant that Alta does recommend that you use for that. But aside from that, you have some oil in the gearbox that you need to replace, but that's really it. So for riders that do regular maintenance on their motorcycles, you know, you're probably gonna save a lot of money down the road when it comes to these because there's just such little maintenance that needs to be done. You know, one other cool thing that I do wanna mention with this is it has regenerative braking. So in other words, when you have the throttle open then you let off as you're coasting, it's actually replenishing the battery. And when you are coasting, when it's replenishing the battery, it gives that sensation like you do have engine braking. So it's not like you just let off and you just coast. You do have that sensation of engine braking, which I think Alta, they did a really good job with that. So there's all my pros. Those are all the benefits, what I think this bike does really, really well. Now let's talk about some of my nitpicks and some things that I think could be better with this bike and a lot of things that I think will get better. First is suspension. Suspension for me, it's really, really soft, too soft. You know, if you're gonna be doing any aggressive off-road riding or even motocross, I'm 175 pounds, I'm, you're probably gonna wanna go stiffer with the suspension. But you have WP suspension on here. So it's really good suspension components. So all you'd really have to do is just get some revalving or maybe go to stiffer springs and you could make the suspension on this bike really good. But stock right off the floor, really soft. Now another nitpick that I have and something I feel needs to be better with these bikes is the battery life. This was a big question mark that we had when we got it. I'm sure a lot of you out there also had the same question. We wanna know, you know, how long do they last? How long does it take to recharge? Can you get another one? Can you swap it out? So with the battery life expectancy, you know, it just depends on what map you're in. You're gonna get a max of three to four hours, but remember in that map four, you're gonna only get 20 minutes out of it. And when it comes to recharging, so Alta says it's gonna take four hours to recharge it on their website, or two and a half, depends if you're at a 110 or a 220 volt socket. So we actually plugged into a 110 and we timed it, and it took us right about five hours before the light came on on the charger saying that the battery was fully charged. So between four and five hours is about how long it's gonna to take to get the battery fully charged. Another question we had is, well, what if you want another battery, if you want to double your riding time? And the answer is yes, Alta does have extra batteries available. You can get those through the dealer that you buy the bike from. But just know that the new battery is going to be about 3,200 bucks that are not inexpensive. And when it comes to install, you can do it yourself, but they do weigh about 70 pounds. So it's going to be really a two person job realistically. It shouldn't take very long. It's going to take maybe 15 to 20 minutes but you do want to know what you're doing. They don't recommend just trying to swap out the battery if you haven't done it before. So highly recommend, you know, looking at the manual, talking to your dealership before you just try and do that. What I think is cool about the batteries is that you have a minimum life expectancy of a thousand hours. So you're going to get a lot of miles out of these. And that doesn't mean that after a thousand hours, the battery's just going to crap out and you're, it's not going to work anymore. It just means that after a thousand hours, you might see a reduction in the amount of charge that the battery hold, will hold. So you might not get as much ride time, but also they actually said that they anticipate seeing a lot of these batteries still on the trails in 10 years from now. So really good life expectancy out of the battery. So another big thing that people are talking about is the price. You know, they are about $15,000, so they are the most expensive dirt bike that is out there. But, you know, I'll be honest, I see people walk into dealerships and lay out $10,000 for a brand new KTM without blinking. And for what you're getting with, you know, how unique these bikes are and the technology, you know, I can really understand why. But who knows, maybe in the future, as we see the technology get better with these bikes, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the price of these actually start to come down a little bit. So the last thing that we'll talk about is, you know, where does this bike fit in? I've heard a lot of riders talk about how they feel like this is just gonna you know, sweep in and, and replace the four strokes and the two strokes. I really don't feel like that's the case. Maybe in the, in the future, yeah, we could see a lot more electric bikes replacing those. But for the time being, I think electric and gas are gonna coexist. They both have, they both have their pros and cons. And the best advice I can give you, if you have mixed feelings, is just go ride one. Go to a dealer, look for a demo bike, take one out. I think with the package that Alta put together, I think you're gonna be impressed. I know I was, I think these bikes are an absolute blast to ride. And I know that as the technology gets better, as we see battery life getting longer, we see recharge times going down. And you know, who knows, like I said earlier, maybe the cost we see go down as well. I think they're just gonna get more and more popular and you know, have more of an impact on the market. But overall, I think Alta did a really good job with this bike and I'm really excited to see what they bring in the future.
All right, so that wraps up our ride review of the Alta Redshift MX. If you guys have any questions about anything I talked about today, well, just comment below. And if you have ridden one of these, I would love it if you comment below, give us your thoughts. What do you guys think about them? What are your pros? What are your cons? And also, I wanna know, do you guys think that these bikes are the future? Keep in mind that we do do a lot of ride reviews and also on other bikes, we do a lot of bike builds as well. So if you like these types of videos, definitely make sure you click subscribe and that's gonna keep you up to date. I'm Chase here at Rocky Mountain. We'll see you on the trails.